Hi everybody, my name is Gary Thwaites from the Tea and Trails podcast and today, well, it is a little bit muddy, apologies for that, but we're going to be taking a look at the Ultra Low Peak 7 trail running shoe. If we could rewind a little bit first though, because the Ultra Low Peak 6, my goodness me, that had to be one of the most comfortable running shoes I've ever used. And when I say comfortable, it wasn't cushioned. It's not a maxed, stacked shoe. It's hard to explain really, but when I put my feet in them, oh my goodness me, they let out a sigh of relief. Is the Ultra Long Peak 7 going to be as comfortable? Let's find out. Now these are going to set you back £135 over at Ultra. You could try your luck and pop over to somewhere like sportshoes.com online because I have noticed, yeah, there's some good deals at the moment. But bear in mind, it is November 2023. So when you're watching this video, those prices might not be accurate. My UK six and a half version of the Ultra Lone Peak 7 weighs in at 270 grams per shoe. And surprise, surprise, the Lone Peak 7 is a zero drop shoe. Okay, let's get into it. And we're gonna start with the outsole. The Lone Peak 7 uses Ultra's Mac Track Sticky Rubber, which does a good enough job on wet rock. A lot of my local trails are quite muddy, bit stony. Not technical though, but it is November, so the trails are wet. And yeah, the Max Track Rubber copes really well. I counted, I hope I've got it right, I counted 47 lugs on the outsole there with a maximum lug height of five millimeters, which is decent, you know, five millimeters, you know, that copes with most occasions. Well, you'll notice this lugs shift in direction from the front to back, and that just helps you cope when the angle of the terrain changes. And so far, the outsole is wearing really well. I've done maybe not quite 100 miles in this. Moving up to the midsole. Yeah, you've got 25 millimeter stack height there. So it's safe to say this is not a maximal shoe. Seeing that, the Ultra Eagle form gives you a good level of cushioning for those 25 millimeters. You've got a rock plate in there too to give you some protection from rocks, stones, maybe big spiky things that are trying to hurt your feet. And it's worked well on my local trails. I don't expect to see big spiky things on my local trails, but I've not had any problems whatsoever. And yes, the rock plate, really super handy. It doesn't seem to hinder flexibility. I like to be able to feel the trail under my foot and the 25 millimeter form just gives me a good level of responsiveness. I've done runs up to two hours long in these on a mixture of road and trail and it's performed awesome for that kind of duration. Lone Peak fans will notice this little bit of plastic. I think basically it's supposed to offer a bit of support, a bit of stability. I've got to say though, I'm not really noticing it. Um, but I run in neutral shoes when I wear road shoes. I don't have any support or any structure. So maybe I wouldn't notice it. But yeah, fair enough. I will eat my words um, if I've been out in these for hours and hours and hours and I'm super tired. And I'm just really super grateful that that bit of support is in there. Let's move on to the upper and fit. The upper is pretty much made from this breathable mesh and in places it does go down all the way to the midsole. And that really does help with drainage. Yeah, talking about drainage, they've removed these holes on the long peak six. There was drainage holes all around the front there. They've taken those away and they've just gone for this solid overlay over the front. I have to say, I've run through puddles, I've run through streams, no problems whatsoever with drainage. Also, the shoe runs pretty good as far as temperature is concerned. No overheating whatsoever, but it is November. My goodness me, if my feet ran hot in November, then I would be worried. But yeah, so far, no dramas, nothing to report. From a design point of view, and I appreciate design is subjective, all the stitching pretty much has been removed from this upper, which from my point of view is an enormous improvement in terms of designs. Sorry, Altra, I did think the Lone Peak 6 looked a little old fashioned, a little outdated, but not these. I think it's a great design update. Hopefully these overlays don't compromise durability. As I mentioned, I'm still running in my Ultra Lone Pig 6 and the upper is holding up fine. 
100% intact, no sign of real wear. So yeah, I'll be curious after six months what these look like. My feet feel super secure and comfortable in this shoe. Loads of padding around the ankle and the heel. And yeah, a decent cup there to keep that heel locked in. Very comfortable around the top of the foot and it feels like there's plenty of support around the arch. The tongue is super comfortable too. My goodness me, even if I tie these laces super tight, the padding in this tongue does such a great job. Really, really comfortable and secure fit. There is a lot of room in the toe box and that is classic with ultra shoes. You know, for me personally at least, it doesn't feel any different to the Lawn Peak 6, but if this is your first ultra shoe, then yeah, I suspect that and you might think, oh my goodness me, this feels a bit weird because it is radically different to most of the other shoes out there. But yeah, trust me on this, for me personally at least, it didn't take long before I really appreciated that extra room in the tour box. However, I am curious, you know, maybe when they release the Lawn Peak 8, I'll drop down half a size because I am just a bit curious what half a size smaller, for my feet at least, would feel like. Highs and lows, yeah, let's finish on some highs and lows. Let's do the highs first. Yeah, as expected, the Ultra Lone Peak 7 is so comfortable, it's really hard to explain how comfortable this shoe is. Maybe it's my feet, maybe I've got super wide feet and they just love this extra room. And yes, it is as comfortable as my Lone Peak 6s. I think it's quite a versatile shoe. I'd happily wear this shoe for a run Obviously, I do that quite a lot. I'd wear it for a hike in the mountains, on the trails. I'd also wear it out and about, just kind of around the shops, around the town, maybe down the pub to Lowe's. Oh, it's not fair of me really, because I'm gonna talk about the stack height, the 25 mil form. Because of that, maybe on a longer race, I'd prefer a bit more cushioning. But then for day in, day out running, I do like to feel the trail under my foot. So that 25 millimeter uh, thickness there gives me that level of feedback that I like but yeah over 100 miler then I probably wouldn't opt for this shoe but I don't think that's a, a negative of this shoe it may be just wasn't designed for that kind of distance. But yeah, you correct me, my goodness me, if you have run 100 miler, 100K in this shoe, then call me out, let me know in the comments below. Okay, let's wrap it up. The Ultra Lone Peak 7 is a great all round everyday trail running shoe. And it's no surprise that the Ultra Lone Peak is Ultra's most popular shoe throughout its trail running range, yeah, it's not as sexy as the new generation of carbon plated super form super shoes, but it doesn't come with that massive 200 pound plus price tag either. Will they make it into my shoe rotation? Yeah, I don't see why not 100%. I still use my Lone Peak 6s and there isn't a huge difference in how the two shoes feel. So yeah, definitely these will be making it onto my shoe shelf. Also, I'm mindful, I do like to switch between a zero drop and a shoe with a bit of a stack height too. So this shoe really does help me tick that box big time. Curious, yeah, have you tried Ultra? Thinking about trying Ultra? Which Ultras do you run in? Yeah, give it a comment below. Before you go, if you would like to check out Precision Fuel and Hydration, then I've got a 15% off discount code for you. Yeah, all caps, T and Trails 15 to receive 15% off your first order. Also, Patreon members, you know, I've mentioned sportshoes.com a few times, but Patreon members can get 10% off over at sportshoes.com and money off loads of other places too. So yeah, check out Patreon. It's a great way. It's probably the best way, to be honest, to support the show. Ultra did send me these shoes to test, but they're not paying me. And more importantly, they did not check this video before I uploaded it to YouTube. Finally, this is my opinion. I really do hope you agree. Genuinely, I hope you agree. You might not. Apologies, but that is 100% fine. Thank you all for watching. And if you did like this video, then please give it a thumbs up. Please give it a share and subscribe to the channel. It's completely free to subscribe. Also, yeah, please check out the UK's number one trail running podcast, T and Trails. Myself and Eddie Sutton upload weekly trail running content. 
and I'll see it again. Check out Patreon. All the links will be in the description below. You take care. I'll see you next time.